Hi, everyone. Thank you for being here. My name is Stephanie Sandala. I am Programming Outreach Specialist at LibraryLink NJ. I'm so excited for this conversation on book bikes. This was a suggestion from some of you after our recent skill sharing conversation. So I'm so happy that Allie Blumenfeld, Community Engagement Manager from Hoboken Public Library, is able to join us and share all about book bikes in Hoboken, how to get started. And Allie, please take it away. Hi, everyone. It's so nice to be with librarians again. I feel like after conference, I miss being around so many people um, and having these conversations. Um, so I'll start by sharing that the two images you see on the screen are actually uh, hand-drawn and designed by my colleague Natalie Castillo, uh, who uh, made these. These are our two, our, both of our book bikes. Um, so it's really fun. I know they look like stock photos, but they aren't. She made them. Um, and so um, today, what I would love, I know that there are other librarians with book bikes in the room. Um, and so this isn't just me sharing information. I'm going to talk about our book bike, um, but I have some topics that I hope that those of us who do have book bikes can jump in and share your expertise and ideas and opinions. Um, and then anyone who doesn't have a book bike but is interested in getting one um, can learn from from several of us um, or jump in with questions. Uh, so these are just the topics that I've put together for today. I'll talk about um, our book bike, um, and then there's a bunch of topics like questions to ask before you get one, considerations, vendors to consider um, when you're planning your outreach services with the book bike, how to promote, evaluation resources. So um, the, I'll share, like some of these are just questions. They're not like my best practices necessarily, but hopefully to get us started and um, those of us who have book bikes can, can also share. Um, I don't, I can't see everyone right now, but I see one person I know who has a book bag, so <laughs> hopefully you'll jump in. So our book bike, we, the Hoboken Public Library got a book bike in 2019. You can see our um, marketing manager who has since retired um, on the book bike at Church Square Park, which is across the street from the library. Um, that was our original design. Um, and to, I wasn't at the library at this time, but I know that the book bike uh, was used as like a marketing tool. It was a way to generate attention. I believe it would be brought out to some festivals, um, but it didn't make any regular visits. And of course, 2019 um, it is right before 2020. <laughs> and so the book bike didn't really go out again until I joined the library in spring 2022. In the center photo, you can see we got a new vinyl wrap. Uh, that was actually in 2023. So my first year taking the bike out, it had the the blue design. And then we uh, got it wrapped by our amazing vinyl uh, vendor, who I'd be happy to share with anyone here. Um, they do honestly jaw-dropping work because our book bikes are custom made, as I'll get into. And you can see, even in this picture, there's all sorts of uh, like hinges and handles and weird corners and they just they cover all of it it's utterly incredible so if anyone has a book bike and you need to get it wrapped which we do once a year because it gets so beat up um, I'll be happy to share that with you um, and then this year we actually got a new book bike so we got a smaller book bike and uh, you could see that in the third photo that's the art and music festival that we went to this year uh, some of the things that we do, we do a combination of regular weekly visits, regular standing monthly visits, and then annual events, um, some of which are ours and some of which we are supporting our community partners. So we do do weekly visits um, that are our own book bike visits around town. Um, we do story times, we bring an art in the park program, and sometimes we just bring a pop-up library where we set up in a park and I have some books and we see who comes by and we'll have prizes or giveaways. Um, but other times we bring programs with the book bike. Um, we'll have special guests like tomorrow, we're doing a drag queen story time with Harmonica Sunbeam at a park here in Hoboken with the book bike. Um, we go to monthly, uh, if there's any city events that happen regularly, things like farmer's market, so we go to an artisan market, there's community bike rides with Bike Hoboken, um, and there are senior luncheons, I'll usually take the book bike to them. 
once a month as well. And then things that are annual, um, so festivals or back to school, uh, backpack giveaways or trunk or treats, photo registration day, things that happen with the seasons or the holidays. Uh, we'll try to take the book bag to those two. We have two regular writers. The first year it was just me. The second year it was pretty much just me, except I had a backup person who I like to call my stunt double, which is funny because he he doesn't really look like me. Um, but uh, this year, my stunt double, James, actually takes the book bike out. Um, we split it pretty much 50-50, which has been really nice. Um, we have our equipment. We have our laptop, a hotspot, library cards. These are things that live in the in or near the book bike. Um, so it's a dedicated book bike laptop, a dedicated book bike hotspot, um, a dedicated cache of library cards, sign up materials. Um, we don't have a collection, like a special book bike collection, um, though I once worked at a library that did have, well, they had a bookmobile, so they had a special collection for the bookmobile. I don't think that would be a bad idea, except as we'll talk about, I like, because we go to so many different places, I like our books that we bring to be really responsive to each individual visit we make, and so that's something that's probably not achievable by making uh, a, a collection dedicated just for the book bike, but that said, I don't know, I could see it being a possibility, but we do have a book bike card, so I'll check out the books to our book bike card so that folks know where the books are, that they're not just missing from the shelves. Um, we have bookends and stands, we have a store of giveaways, and we have flyer holders, so these are just the things that we, that, again, live on the book bike, and then extras, things that we keep depending on the season and where we're going. So zip ties have come in handy, uh, you know, an emergency kit or first aid kit, water, sunscreen, things like that, um, especially when we're doing long, uh, long visits uh, all day long out in the sun. I just want to share some of our stats just because I think they're a little interesting. So 2022, sorry. Yes, 2022 was our first year out. And 2023 was our second year. This is our third. Um, so you could see in the same time frame, some of these numbers went up significantly. So we had a lot more visitors because we did a lot more programming. Um, we did a lot more visits. So we went from 66 to 98 visits during the season. However, what I always find interesting is that the number of new cards did not really change that much. I like to say, congrats me, it's because everyone in Hoboken has a library card now. Um, but it's just interesting to see, um, and it's something that we're constantly thinking about, um, is are we reaching the right communities? Because surely there are still people who need library cards. And even though we're reaching almost double the people, um, we're not getting as many new faces, perhaps. Um, and our checkouts and returns went up, which is good. Um, but yeah, the, we didn't really make too many new library cards despite uh, so many new visits. So I'd be interested to hear from others what your experience has been, if you've done it for a few years, if you've seen similar trends. Um, but we'll get to talk about that later. Um, this comes from social media posts that I make on our book bike Instagram, which I'll also talk about later. Um, so I like to share this with the community as well, not just us. Um, so I wanted to spotlight some New Jersey book bikes that I'm aware of. These are just folks that I've talked to. Um, there's Glenridge, Maplewood, Cranford. I don't know if you're here. I see Irene, but that's because I only see like four people on the bottom. I don't know if anyone else is here. <laughs> um, but these are just some book bikes that I know of. Um, these are some other book bikes that I admire and I thought were really cool looking. Um, Oak Park, Illinois, to me, is like the gold standard in book biking. Um, I only say that because I attended a couple of their sessions at ABOS, the Association for Bookmobile and Outreach Services, which I'll also bring up again later. Um, and they just, they do incredible work. They go to a lot of, um, in their community, I think it's a suburb of Chicago. Um, they have a lot of block parties, um, which sounds really fun, but they actually have something like 10 riders for their book bike. Um, and they, they just do really good work. Um, so who here has a book bike? You, I don't know the best way. I'm not, <laughs> Stephanie, if you have an opinion, <laughs> people can raise their hand or just jump in and say hi. Yeah, people, people here. yeah, people can unmute themselves um, or put anything in a chat. I know Irene is already here and unmuted herself. So not to put you on the spot, Irene, but feel free to jump in. <laughs> yes, we have a book bike <laughs> and we awesome. do a lot of the same things that Allie does. Um, uh, 
Maplewood is interesting because it's very hilly. So we have an electric assist, assist on our bike. I think you do too, right, Ali? Yeah, I could even in Hoboken where it's relatively flat. I don't think yeah. I could do it without yes. the electric assist. <laughs> They're pretty heavy. <laughs> So, um, so we like, we're, I just, I'm scheduling for the summer. We're going to be at the community pool for, uh, each week while we're doing summer reading in the past, we've done longer than that, but we're actually getting ready to open our new library in the fall. So we've kind of scaled down a little bit on what we're doing this year, but we also will go to the farmer's market this year. Um, we probably won't take the book bike to the farmer's market because, um, it's the farmer's market's moved and it's right outside of our um, branch. So we're just going to take a table out. Um, but we go to um, festivals. Um, um, the idea is that we'll go to schools. We haven't, we, we only have um, three riders and it's a little difficult. Um, we need more riders too. So that's, I think, one thing to be, aware of that <laughs> getting people to ride the bike um can be interesting um yeah so i'll let somebody else share now that's so exciting i love the idea of going to the town pool it's great i i was um i was farmed out to milburn for a while and i encouraged them to do it and they're doing it they don't have a bike but they've been doing it and they have a blast that's so fun. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of people are interested in, in getting one. I don't know if Mary Catherine is from Cranford and saying that they have one or just noting that that's a library that has one. I had them in my slides because I actually talked to them when they were in the process of getting theirs, which is cool. Oh my gosh, I'm so excited by the people who haven't heard of it before or who are like getting inspiration today. I proselytize about book bikes all the time because I think they're so much fun. And um, hopefully, um, and Irene, since you're the only one here with a book bike, jump in at any opportunity, like literally any at all to share. Um, but there's a lot of considerations, of course, Irene brought up a few that we'll talk about, um, but I will say off the bat that like I'm not a cyclist. I don't before I rode the book bike, I don't think I had ridden a bike in like 10 years. I just don't ride bikes. I'm not a very athletic person. I'm pretty sedentary. Um a lot of staff are afraid and they look at the book bike and and they have some fear around it. Um, but I hope I show everyone that you don't have to be, you know, an expert or anything. Um, it's a tricycle, so you don't even have to balance. It's electric. I don't even have to pedal. I literally just sit there and look pretty going down the street. Um, just it's kidding. It's actually better but... if you don't ride a bike. <laughs> <laughs> you think so? Yeah. I mean, it, it, we found that people, because like when I started riding it, I was leaning. I was trying to, you know, mm -hmm. I was trying to balance mm -hmm. on it. So we've come to the conclusion that if you're not a regular bike rider, you probably will do better on the tricycle. Than That's really good to know. Mm -hmm. My other rider, uh, James, is someone like he, he lives in Jersey City and he'll bike to work. So he's someone who rides a bike all the time. Um, and uh, he, he enjoys it still, but I can see that being different too. But yeah, it really, it's something anyone can do. Um, of course, the only thing that I had to brush up on um, was bike safety, um, rules of the road. Um, I took like an online quiz and, um, and did some research and learned about, you know, road signaling and things like that. Um, but anyway, so for those of us who are considering getting a book bike, these are some um, of the questions. Was that someone? I, yeah, this is Mary Sudiak. I'm sorry. I had, I am on my phone and I'm used to doing the video calls on my phone and had to figure out how to unmute myself. Oh, I see. Um, from Cranford? My, my, yes, I'm from Cranford. I live in Cranford and we have a book bike and I took it out for the first time um, at, at an event um, this past weekend. And um, I have to say uh, the thing that concerned me most and we're going to have to work on it is um, safety while, while riding. We didn't have, we don't have any mirrors, so I can't see behind me. Um, and that was a little unnerving. And it, I, I'm concerned that when 
I use my hand signals that people won't be able to see my hand signals because of the box for the books behind me. Um, mm -hmm. So um, looking into seeing about having us get some kind of uh, signaling device, but we do have the tricycle with the um, electronic assist, you know, e-bike and um you know, it, I, I think it'll be a lot of fun once we get out in the community more and once we have more, a, more, a better sense of um, how to organize us going to events. That's that's one of the things that, um, you know, we, we're working on at this point is how to get out in the community more and how to have, like I, I heard about the pool. I think that was an idea we had, but we haven't implemented that yet. Um, maybe because we attended, uh, I think, Allie, was you, were you the one that did the talk at NJLA last uh, year? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we, we attended your talk. And I remember, um, you know, a lot of different ideas coming up. And so hopefully we'll get out more, but um, it's a, we're starting. That's so exciting. Um, yeah. It's so if you, if you do find a good, cause we have the same vendor, I think. So our bike will look the same. If you find a good mirror, like something, cause I've been thinking about that too, like getting mirrors to put on the handlebars or something. Um, it's not a, on my last bike, it wasn't a big deal for me to turn around, but on this bike, my umbrella is right here. And so for me to look this way, I actually don't have very good visibility and it scares me. So I have been thinking about maybe getting mirrors too. So if you if you pursue that, or if I do, let's share with each other because I would love that. Um, or I'm sure you could do something with signaling. Yeah, like, I, I actually, I went to our bike local bike store and um, they indicated there were, there were some mirrors that we could put on the end caps of the um, handlebars. And I'm going to have one of my uh, co-riders uh, look at look at the look at them and see whether or not he thinks that they're going to be giving us enough of a, um, mm -hmm. uh, you know, because yeah. because you have to have it. a you have to have a mirror. You can't just put a mirror on your uh, on your um you have to have something that can go around. They can see around the 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 book the, the book case. So, mm -hmm, so to speak. exactly, yeah. yeah. So, anyways, I, I don't want to hold. I don't want to hog the conversation. I just wanted to say yes. Cranford has one, and you know, and I think it'll be a lot of fun too. Thank you. Thanks. So we did put mirrors on our mm. handlebars. Um, we have um, a style similar to your first one, Allie. Mm -hmm. um, we don't have that extra extension on it, but. Mm -hmm. um, we have uh, mirrors that we plugged into the handlebars and they kind of they have a little wire out so you that can, can you send me like where you got them from or the brand or yeah, something I, we actually have a bike store you right went to your bike shop too i'm sure there's one in hoboken we'll yeah, we'll find you, one and go okay yeah. that's really good we'll I will, i'll take a picture of it and i'll send it out okay yeah, that's so could, exciting if you could send it around that would be great so sure. that i could see it too i'm gonna mm -hmm. mute myself um so, so some of the questions that we might ask as you're thinking about uh, getting a book bike, um, just like when you're planning any outreach service, um, we want to get out of our building, we want to reach the community where they are, but we have to be intentional about it because time is at a premium, staff support is at a premium, we we have to be intentional, right, with any new service we we create. So just the same way, thinking about who we're trying to reach, children, families, seniors, like which part of your community um, are you looking to engage more? Is there a literal location? So for us, when I was hired, they had just run uh, some data, I guess, on library card uh ownership in Hoboken and found that it was concentrated, like the addresses were concentrated around our main branch and there really weren't a lot of card holders uptown. Um, as some of you might know, Hoboken is one square mile, but jam packed with 60,000 people. Um, and people don't always leave their neighborhoods because you have the things you need and people will not walk from 13th street down to fifth street to get to the library. Um, and so the uptown was a big blind spot for us and we really wanted to engage the community up there. So part of it was the book bike will help us bring the library to the area of town where we don't have a branch. Um, 
And then what services are you trying to expand or introduce to the community? For us, it, it started off with, we just want more card holders. We want more people to be aware of the library. Um, and then later on, it became, uh, you know, engaging them with more specific programs and touting more of our services specifically. But at the beginning, it was just awareness of the library. Um, so thinking, is a book bike the right outreach vehicle or tool for your specific community? Some other considerations, of course, are staff interest, um, and if in this, if it requires training, so some vendors will do like some training on the book bike. Sometimes you can contact um, the League of American Bicyclists. I think like they'll do some training sometimes, um, but mostly like, do you have the staff that are interested? And that was something that um, at Hoboken was a challenge as well. Um, when I started, the only person on the staff who was willing and able to ride the book bike was the marketing manager. And that's not really his job. He's not a librarian. He's not doing outreach. Um, he had one specific goal in mind, which is promoting the library, which definitely fits in with uh, a book bike. Um, but that wasn't his job. Um, and no one else on the staff raised their hand and said, I want to ride it. Um, so making sure before you make the purchase that you have people who are interested and, and willing to learn and do it. I mean, it sounds silly, but it's true. Like it's different than getting a wagon or just saying, hey staff, we're gonna, the van is gonna drive you to this fair, you get to table. Um, this is a very different, different thing. Um, storage and transportation. So Hoboken, I, as I said, is one square mile, it's urban. There are a lot of one-way streets. Um, it's a grid. It's really easy to navigate. I have all the streets memorized. Um, it's really easy to get around. I don't need to use a map. Um, I, like I said, I'm on one-way streets, so I'm not really like fighting with cars too much. Uh, there's also a lot of bike lanes. Hoboken's a very bike-friendly city. That's not going to be everywhere. That's honestly not going to be most places. Um, so thinking about the logistics of your community um, and if you can get a book bike, do you have, and you still want to bring it places, do you have a van that can transport it if necessary, or do you have routes to the places that you want to go? Um, is it going to be easy for you to ride a bike there, or you do have to get on a, on a, uh, like a small highway, like things like that, um, is something you might not think about when you're normally getting to outreach events, but here, you know, when you're on the bike, or can you bring the bike? And as far as storage, that's really hard for us. We're a historic building on a city block with no parking lot, and uh, we can't build any outside structures. So I would love like um, like a little shed. Like if I had my way, I'd have a little shed for the book bike where I'd roll it in, lock it up, but I can't do that. So instead, we have to bring the book bike into the library in and out every day through the elevator. Our elevator is ADA compliant but probably the smallest ADA compliant elevator you've ever seen. Um, and especially with the, our first book bike, which had a trailer and a hitch, they had to take it apart and do the bike and then do the back part. And it was kind of a nightmare. Our new bike is smaller and it doesn't come apart, but that has its own challenges because it's very heavy. So that's something where I don't know if I would have made a different decision if I were in charge when we got our first book bike, um, because we really don't have an easy way to bring it in and out. Um, but thinking about storage, um, repairs and maintenance, do you have a bike shop in town? Um, will the vendor be able to provide any support? Um, we had our book bike vendor come out to deliver our new book bike, and he spent like two or three hours repairing our old one, which was really great. Um, and then of course, budget. So um, our book bike was about five thousand dollars our new one uh, which included about fifteen hundred for delivery um, and setup and everything um, so four thousand or three three to four thousand I think is relatively normal but others can jump in uh, with their price points um, for us we just took it from um, our library budget but if you have a friends and foundation you can fundraise for it um, I know I think it's Cranford got a lot of community sponsorships for their book bike um, from local businesses, which is really, really cool. So the big question being, is a book bike the right outreach vehicle for your library? So it might be right for your community, wrong for your library, it might be right for your library, wrong for your community, um, but just things to think about. Um, Irene or Mary, do you have anything to add to these questions or considerations before you make a purchase? Yeah, um, we one of the reasons that we 
did get the bike is because we we knew we were going to be closed. The main library was going to be closed for three years. So um, this gave us the opportunity to get out more into the community and have a very visual um, bike. You know, um, you know, before when you table at festivals, you're not always seen because everybody's table at festivals festivals but with the book bike you you really attract a lot of attention so that's a big positive for for being out there um with the bike um but we also saw that we could use it around uh, so um the branch is um on springfield avenue in maplewood and that's a relatively flatter area than where our main library is the main library is down in the valley and we're up so um so it basically housed at the branch and we don't really have a storage space for it either so it actually sits out on the floor in the public area um right now uh for the summer it'll probably come over to our temporary adult location which is right near the pool so we but it's the building we're in is an old rescue squad building so we have a bay to put it in um so yeah that is a big consideration um because you know it's like kids start playing with it which is fine but you know they could get hurt and you don't want them to get hurt so um we actually have stoppers for it so that they can't roll it away but um but it's tough repairs and maintenance we um we have a bike shop right across the street and actually our the funding for our bike came from the foundation the library foundation but also from a local um salon who was good friends with uh the family um this young man who uh opened the book the bike shop across the street from the library um died in a motorcycle accident and so they were good friends with the family so they helped us buy the book bike and it's in memory to him so they help us out with um maintenance that's lovely um in cranford i we do have a shed um in the back of our library which it is the home for the book bike um that we lock up and um in terms of the comment, we did get uh, a, a very nice donation from our Friends Association. We also got a very nice donation from our local JCs. And I believe we only have one local business that um, actually um, um, provided financial support. But, um, I, I, you know, I don't know that we actually tried. I don't know how hard people were trying to get um money from other sources uh i'd say a, my recollection and this is really just a recollection is about half of the money we needed came from either the friends the jc's or the local business and the rest of it was from the library budget and would you say it was like four or five thousand dollars you know off the top of my head i really don't want to misspeak but you sure. know like four Four sounds kind of in the ballpark. I don't. I don't think it was as 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 um. I, I think it was definitely more than three, um, but I'm not sure it was as much as five. So that's why I'm thinking maybe around four or over three, but not quite four. Ours. Was I can five, get the number for you later today. Sure. Ours was want. five flat, but then the vinyl wrap was five hundred on top of that, and we do that. We've had to wrap it every year, so that's like a continuing cost. But that's because we have to manhandle our manhandle our bike in order to get it into the building. So it probably wouldn't get so many scrapes in the vinyl wrapping if if we didn't have to do that. So that's probably going to depend on the library. So I'm just going to briefly go through some vendors. I am not paid by any of them, so I'm trying to promote them on equal footing. Um, this, of course, I'll start with ours. We used Pedal Positive from Denver, Colorado. Our first book bike, the one you can see in the rightmost photo and the middle photo, um, that's the one that we got before I started. So I didn't really have a say in, in choosing a vendor. But when it came time to get a new one, I reached out to all three that I was aware of to get the dimensions because really our big issue was will it fit in the elevator and pedal positive was the only bike that would fit in our elevator. Um, but as you can see, the bike is in the front, 
and the cart is in the back. And as you'll see, that's not the case with the other two vendors. Um, I love our book bike. Our old one was a behemoth. It was so heavy. It was fine to ride, but it was just a lot. It was really heavy and it was a lot. And something interesting is that these were both custom made just for the library. So there's no other book bikes that will look like this. Um, they'll look very similar. The one on the left is a very similar, a very common design, but that's actually like an old file cabinet from like the Red Rocks Arena in some state out west that I am not aware of. Um, the two flaps that come up, the two shelves that come up are cutting boards that he made. Um, so it's very like DIY, homemade and specific to us. The other one, the old one was where film, film reels were stored in that container. Um, I think that the marketing manager, he had this idea that the bike is eco-friendly, so we wanna recycle uh, the equipment for it. We don't wanna make something new. We wanna use an old item that can be repurposed uh, to put our books in it, which is a cool idea. The new book bike works a lot better for that, but the old one, it really wasn't made for books at all. So it was, a, it was challenging. It was challenging um, because the books would slide around. I'd open up the case and they'd all come tumbling out. Um, I'm sure there are things I could have done to like help secure them more. Um, and I, I think I would put like a bungee cord or something. Um, but I would say the new bike I'm so thrilled with um, it, it, it really serves us well and is really easy to cart about. It's a lot lighter too. So I feel like I zip down the street more than with the old one. Um, but yes, I have so much fun on the book bike. Another vendor is Icicle Tricycles. They're in Portland, Oregon. Um, this is the first book bike I ever saw on the internet when I, I don't know why I was looking it up at some point years before I worked here. That photo in the middle is really familiar to me. I think that's like from 2021. So maybe they have a more, a different model now. Um, but you can see it's different. You push the cart along as opposed to having it trail behind you. Um, and you can see like, it just looks very different. Like you can do a lot more with it. You have your, uh, like a, what's it called? Chalkboard and the way that you can set it up. Um, Haley Tricycles is another vendor that's similar to Icicle. Um, they both, the main thing is that they have very different um, handlebars. This one, I think it's like a, a bar that goes straight across as opposed to like two bike handlebars. Um, but again, similar idea where you push it in front of you. So um, there might be other book bike vendors. These are just the big three um, that, I've, that I've seen. Um, at the ABOS conference, which is where I got to test ride them. So that's me test riding Icicle and Haley trikes, because at the time we were thinking about, and that's me carting around the, the person who builds the Haley trikes. But this is actually how fast I was going. <laughs> It was <laughs> it was really hard. They weren't electric, and I'm very weak. Um, and they did have e assist, but you couldn't fold them up. So that was one of the problems: is that um, we you couldn't fold up the bike if it had e assist, um, and I needed e assist. Um, so yeah, just it was it was really fun to try them out. Um, and like I said, I'm not. I'm not trying to push anyone toward one vendor or the other. I've heard great things about all three from different libraries, and I've heard subpar things about all three from different libraries. Everyone's going to have a different experience. Um, but I would say for me, I like the bike being in the front. It's just preferable to me. It was uh, much more comfortable. I feel more in control. Um, but again, I'm someone who doesn't ride bikes that often, so perhaps someone else would enjoy this type of setup. Um, when it comes to planning, um, of course, there's so many different avenues you can go down, um, as uh, my colleagues mentioned, too. Um, showing up to places in town where there's an event happening versus showing up to places in town where there's not an event happening. Do you bring your own content? Do you bring your own programming? Or do you just want to go where the party is? Do you want to go to that block party, to the farmer's market, to the festival? Um, standalone visits were success are successful for us, but definitely more so when we bring content. So our story times in the park with the book bike are probably our most successful. We get up to 200 people at those sometimes. Um, not 200 checkouts, not 200 cards made, um, but definitely I would say 20 to 30 circs each time. Um, a lot of engagement with the book bike in any case, and the kids love it. Um, they really, really love it. 
um, art in the park, we get about 30 to 40 people each week um, where we bring the book bike and the content is uh, setting up in the park with um, materials for sketching. Um, maybe I maybe one time they did watercolor. I'm not sure. Mostly sketching, I think. Um, we'll bring chalk, bubbles, just things to make people happy while they're spending time in the park. Um, and we are open to partnerships and requests, which is something you can consider. Um, we are not inundated at all. Um, and I constantly have to remind people that we do this, but I do have a Google form where a group, an organization in town can reach out and say they'd like the book bike to come uh, for a visit or to do a story time. So for the past two summers, we were doing story times for a local preschool. They would bring their kids and we would do a story time. They didn't engage with the book bike, but they loved it. Like they couldn't check out books, but they wanted the book bike there. So that was fun. Um, and I imagine that there would be other groups like schools. Um, I know Irene mentioned schools as well. Um, we haven't started doing that yet, but we have a school outreach librarian on our team who already goes into the schools on a very regular basis, like several times a month to bring a pop-up library into the school. So it would be a little redundant to bring the book bike, um, but maybe for things like summer camps, there's a lot of potential. Um, but thinking about what your capacity is, is just so important. Um, and again, those questions of where you want to reach and who you want to reach. Um, and yeah, anything else to add? Yeah, just to go back to your point about um, what books you bring with you. Um, yeah, I we do. We don't have a separate collection. We do a curated, um, like we were at the uh, Pride picnic a couple of weeks ago. And so we had LGBTQ books um, for kids and teens because it was a youth picnic. And um, then like later in August, there's Punk Fest, um, which is a music festival slash vendor event. And um, for food trucks and a beer garden and all that so we'll bring music books and then there's a we have porch fest here um in maplewood which if you don't know what that is it's like our hilton neighborhood actually does it they just organize bands throughout one day and like there's a schedule of like three bands at one house during the day and there but it'd be like 10 houses so you'd go around the neighborhood listening to music so the book bike rides around and stops wherever there's a good band playing and a lot that's of people. so cute so and that, that it gets a lot of attention there and we do a lot of checkouts there sure. too so um yeah so just i think curating the collection is probably the best for especially yeah. if you're going to certain types of events. And it's not like it's a whole bookmobile, you know, it's right. you only bring, I don't actually, I, I wouldn't, I don't count up, but let's say 50 books or so children's yeah. adults, like, you know, we have some stuff when we do an after school stop, we'll bring more middle grade books um, because you'll get the elementary school, middle school kids. Um, but in the mornings when we do our story times, it's really only babies. So we'll bring mostly board books and a couple of books for adults. Um, but yeah, the freedom and flexibility to to curate for each visit is really nice because it's small. It's easy. It's usually one or two bins of books for me. Yeah. And so like for the pool, we'll bring um, mostly kids books um, and then some adult and some teen, but it's really the kids books that... Yeah that go out from the at the pool and um and you have to think about the, the pool as if it <laughs> oh my gosh yeah <laughs> just just know that some books they might are get come splashed back. yeah, yeah. yeah. Just, just go with the flow I'm but it's mind. worth it to get <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> to get the books in their hands yeah. their little pruny wet hands um so for promotion the best thing we did was make our standalone instagram um we didn't, I really wanted something where people can check because weather is the biggest consideration. Unlike a bookmobile, unlike other forms of outreach, um, the book bike can't be outside in the rain, or at least that's the determination we made, um, is not to bring the book bike outside in the rain. And it's, we've already had 
cancellations because of it. Um, but it's a place where people can go to get that up to the minute information. And we, we're trying to be really intentional about our social media for our main account. We have an amazing social media coordinator um, and a whole committee that's dedicated to making good content for it. So I didn't really want to inundate it with my day to day or minute to minute book bike updates. Um, I'd be worried that it wouldn't reach the people it needed to reach. Um, my book bike Instagram has about 400 followers and um, I don't even try that hard to get them. It's literally, I just spread the news, the the, the word when I'm at visits, um, but I can post things like you can see here. Where's the book bike today? I do that every time we go on visits. Um, whenever we have a cancellation, um, I make my colleague made this map and then I fill it in with with where we'll be each month um, and my colleague also made those buttons as well um, and we do integrate some promotion with our main like it's on our website it's on our, in our newsletter it's sometimes on our main uh, Instagram like in stories whenever there's a book bike visit that day um, something I completely forgot to mention too is you know, timing and this has to do with staff and capacity and where you want to be um, for us because bringing the book bike out is such a thing um, my first year we took it out four days a week for one visit a day and that was just too much on our staff so we have book bike days where we'll do two or three visits on that day um, we do our weekend events like the festivals and things like that but in terms of our own scheduled visits in the community as you can see in the first image all the way to the left um, thursdays and fridays are our book bike days and we'll do two visits on each of those days um, so that leads into evaluation. Um, we keep rigorous statistics uh, at each visit. It's really just a sheet. We tally, we have things like attendance, um, uh, how many books in, how many books out, how many cards new, how many cards re renewed, um, reference questions, uh, any giveaways. Um, we try to just keep track of every interaction that we have while we're on the book bike um, because we need to prove that the service is worthwhile, worth all of our time and energy. Um, and when we get back to the library, I have a Google form where we input these numbers and it gives me a spreadsheet where I keep track um, for every visit, every month. Um, just book bike visits, and then also all of our outreach together. Um, so I do recommend something as easy as like, you know, paper or some other tool you might have, um, but then being able to put the data together back at the library is really helpful. I also have, I don't have my phone with me, but I um, have a people counter app, which is helpful for the bigger events and, and street fairs, where I just uh, tap every time I see a person and it keeps account for me. That's been really helpful. Um, but this is a way to know if your visits are successful and what you should be changing. Hearing feedback and requests from folks, what kinds of books do they want? Um, there's a field for that on our form, you know, for feedback. Um, and other libraries at ABOS have been talking about equitable assessment of visits. So we've tried a lot of different things. Um, every year, our visits have been different. Again, not the big festivals, those all stay the same. But in terms of the visits that we just make, um, we've tried switching it up every two months to do a rotating different parks. And we found that people preferred stability and consistency. So we decided to go to our most popular parks on a more regular basis and do the parks that were further away for special events. Um, we've had parks that didn't really perform too well, you just didn't get a lot of people, but it was so dependent on the time of year and we wouldn't know till we got out there. So we had set up a schedule and then we show up late June, school is out and um, there was nobody in the park. All the families were on vacation, they were in summer camp, like just there was no activity whatsoever. Um, it was so different just from a few weeks before where you would see people using the park. There was just no one in the park for the summer. So this year we're not doing those visits and we're trying to, we're going to be doing cafe visits and doing outreach to cafes in town on Friday mornings. Um, then we had a visit that started in the summer and was pretty successful. And then as soon as September hit, we found that at that exact time, schools were using that park for recess because you know, we're in an urban environment. So they brought the kids over to the park for recess and it just got overrun and the kids were everywhere and we couldn't do our story time. There wasn't space for us. So it was a lot of trial and error to see what would work because it changes throughout the year. And in terms of equity, there were visits that we were making to communities where they were underserved and we really need 
we really need to share our services and promote library card usage and get people to have library cards, um, which is not something that happens at the big 80 person story times because a lot of those families already have library cards and know about the library. So those numbers are bigger, right? Like we'll get huge turnout for some events, smaller turnout for others, but which is more important? They're all important, of course, but am I going to end this visit to this community just because only five people talk to me? Well, if two of them got library cards, that's a big success in my book. Um, so it's been interesting to assess what works and what doesn't and to think about the needs of our community. Because um, while the numbers are really important, they don't tell the whole story. Um, and every year I think we've tried something different. I think this year is the, the most similar, like our pattern is similar to last year, but still we're making a major change, which is no afternoon visits for July and August because the parks were just empty at that time. Um, but, um, but yeah, so a lot of like iterative learning um, and I would say just don't be afraid to get it wrong and, and, and find out later, but that's part of the reason why the statistics keeping is so important is because it's a way for you to keep track of feedback and, um, and which visits are successful or not. So my biggest thing I just want to get across uh, before we run out of time is to join ABOS. I love ABOS. Um, I think it's a great organization. It feels very like um, homegrown. It's a, like not a lot of people, but it's national. So I love the conference because it's small, um, but you get to meet people from all over the country and everyone's an outreach library worker. Everyone's doing similar work to you. Um, and it's just, it's my favorite. So um, follow them, see if you can go to the conference. Um, they're like an affiliate of ALA, but it's not ALA itself. Um, and they have an Instagram, which is fun. And they do a lot of engagement on it too. And then, yeah, and then this is my information. Um, you can follow our book bike if you want to see what we do. My That e email account goes just right to my inbox. It's easier than my last name and my first name. Um, so yeah, okay, questions. Okay, I just wanted to make sure um, that was great. Thank you, Allie. <laughs> so yeah, um, I see that someone had a question about storage, which you had already answered. And I really like that you, um, Irene, and then Mary Catherine all have different um, variations of storage. So I think it's just whatever would work best for your library, your space um, is the answer. And then you answered questions about cost too. Um, I know David had asked about insurance issues, if there's any. Um, if there's anything that you might have like that we really need to know about insurance for the bike, so um, someone, that is a good question. So I'll answer and then everyone else should jump in too because I, I don't know the real answer. But what we do, because um, uh, a librarian from somewhere in the country reached out to me after a presentation I made and asked the same question. And um, I asked our admin and basically we are covered like any library like property, including the book bike would be covered under our citywide, like we're under the city of Hoboken's insurance policy. So anything that I, any damage I incur while on work time using library property would technically fall under that policy. And then if anything happens to me, it would just be workers comp. So that's what I was told. Like we don't have any extra insurance uh, taken out regarding the book bike, but I hope everyone else can answer for their libraries because I'm not saying that's the, the right answer, the gold standard. That's just what what we do. That's the same here. Okay. Um, so it is the gold standard. No, just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> I'm pretty sure that's Valley and I do it. Well. <laughs> um, I'm sorry. Also, I'm... Go ahead. I'm pretty sure that's the case for Cranford as well. See, then it definitely okay. Is the gold then standard. it's perfect. Yeah. Um, one thing to make sure of though is that every rider has a helmet. Or well, I don't mm. know if you guys share helmets, but um, no. <laughs> anyone anyone that um, rides the book bike, um, yes. the library will buy a helmet for. So same here, yeah. And each individual budget. has their own helmet, and yeah. um, it has to be worn for sure. Okay, great. Yeah, thanks for that um, answer too. Now there's another um, comment about liability. So I think that was pretty much answered in your previous um, answer. So that was great information. 
Um, let me see. I want to don't make sure I don't want to miss anything. Uh, how do people check out books? Do you write it down? Do you bring a laptop? I'm also, also wondering about that. Yeah, we bring a laptop. So we have a, a special, we have a book bike laptop. It is connected to our ILS. Uh, we have a VPN, um, like we're, we're Buckles, we're Buckles Library. So it's a VPN and then we connect to that and then we can connect to Leap um, just the same as we would like leap.buckles.com or whatever, org or whatever it is. Um, it's the same as at the library. Um, but I've been at other libraries where we used workflows, Circe Dynex, and that was a little different. I think it was like a mobile version of that app and we didn't have a VPN. Um, so I think every every library system should have a way to, to access their ILS remotely, um, but that's what we do. We also have a, a portable charger um, that we just that we bought um, where we can plug in the laptop if needed. But we keep our visits short, um, about 30 minutes to an hour. Like the story time will be 30 minutes. The whole visit is usually an hour. Um, and then for our long all day events, we've definitely made use of the portable uh, charging block. Um, and then we bring our own hotspot wireless hotspot because we don't want to rely on our community partners or wherever we're going to have good service. Um, so that's how we do our circs, our checkouts. We make library cards on the spot. Um, and I'm pretty forgiving. If you've heard me talk at a conference, you've probably heard me say this, that, um, you know, you're walking around the park, you're not bringing your wallet with you, you're not bringing your whole life with you. Um, so I tend to be a little more forgiving when I'm on outreach um, because I don't want to tell someone no. I just don't. Like, I can't guarantee you're going to make it to the library after we talk. So I really want you to have a card. Um, so if people can prove it on their phone or in any other way, I'm super happy. If they don't have their ID, I I'll still make them a card. Um, because if they, again, like if they can prove their their residency in some other way. Because um, again, you're out in the park, you're not expecting to interact with the library. Um, but I don't want to say no. Um, so making cards is something we love to do at the book bake. So we use an iPad. Um, we just had like an old iPad that we've been using for the teens and games. And we just put everything up on there, the VPN. We're also buckles, so it's the same for us. Um, and we have a hotspot. So hotspot and iPad dedicated to the bike and all outreach actually. Um, so I find with the iPad probably, it's a little more difficult to, to key in all the information for a, a library card. So we tend just to use paper applications to give them the card and then we put it in later. But for checkouts, it's great to be able to check people out really quickly and you can look them up if they don't have their card. And we do the same that if they have like a utility bill or something on their phone, that um, shows that they live in Maplewood, we will issue them a card. We also just got a handheld scanner, which I'm really like a wireless handheld scanner. And I lost my mind because I didn't know things like that existed. And that's, <laughs> I actually just heard it arrived. So I'm really excited to use it. Let me know. Yeah. Because right now you're like, did, did, did. I know. And in the sunlight, it doesn't always yeah. read it. Like, yeah. it's awful. And then people have it on their phone as well. Like, they'll use the Buckles app, mm -hmm. but my scanner doesn't read the phone, but this new one will. So, always innovating, always trying to make things better. That's amazing, Allie. Keep us posted too. And thank you for both of those answers, Irene and Allie. So before I forget, oh, Dale was wondering how fast does the book bike go? in terms of miles per hour. I was also wondering that. <laughs> like, well, Hoboken has a speed limit throughout the whole city. And that's really, we would not even reach it. The, I don't know why, I don't really pay attention on this book bike because it's, I know that it's pretty slow, um, but our old book bike was in kilometers not miles which took me a while to realize <laughs> and um i think it like never went above 16 or 18 kilometers but i don't know what that is in miles because the education system failed me um <laughs> but irene we have the same book bike vendor and i'm sure it goes the yes. same yeah. speed so, so if you know please jump in <laughs> it's uh, i think we can get like 10 to 12 miles per hour and that's with the electric assist too, because this, it's just think about it. It's, it's a heavy vehicle 
I think our box weighs more than your new box does because um, uh, it, it was it built. opens like yeah and it opens differently and I think yeah. it's like heavier I think it's heavier mm -hmm. but um but yeah so with the electric assist it probably is like 10 so yeah I mean we've actually um had to like have I've driven behind somebody riding the bike especially on some you know major roads so because you're they're going so slow and traffic is not oh look at Dave Costa 10 miles per hour yeah I think Hoboken right. citywide speed limit is 15 I want to oh, say really? oh. yeah like they it's a really they're trying to make it a really bike friendly city and it's mm -hmm. just like people drive so nutty so yeah. it's pretty and low and so narrow. I yeah. and they're so narrow so mm -hmm. I don't feel bad going too slow and mm -hmm. I try to favor streets with a bike lane as much as I can yeah. um but otherwise I'm just kind of and so one thing I'll say really quickly is that our old book bike wrap the blue one there wasn't a lot of brand recognition with it um people thought I was selling ice cream um so when we rewrapped it it was also in conjunction with our new branding so we had this bright color we actually put the word library on it and throughout last year and this year the drivers are so much nicer to me because they know it's the library I'm not just some capitalist selling ice cream <laughs> on the streets I'm a public librarian <laughs> and so honestly I get people honking and waving at me not honking like why aren't you going faster um so I would say the the more you can make it like book bike your library logo like we're nice. We have books. Let us go slow. <laughs> That'll help with 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 people on the roads. They, they are so much nicer to me the past two years than the first year. <laughs> now, our obviously our library, we have our logo on it, but we still get mistaken for a hot dog vendor as well as an ice cream vendor. More hot dogs because I think we're we're kind of orangey and ready, and so mm -hmm. like, people think more hot dogs with us. With the blue, it was like I think Ben and Jerry's blue. <laughs> yeah I never thought about that so I appreciate you both sharing being mistaken for ice cream or hot dogs so, okay um let me make sure I'm not missing anything oh where do you test drive the bikes that is another question I had not considered I imagine for a library with a parking lot before after the library closes would be a wonderful spot we don't have that luxury but we do have a park right across the street um and so when i was first learning to ride the book bike i would ride it through the park and then my colleague mark um who was the only rider when i started um brought his bike to work and would ride alongside me for my first few visits um but riding in parks was really was really safe and um helpful to practice turning um and um that's where I, I did my practicing my test rides or did you mean the test rides in my video that I showed because that was at the ABOS conference that was in her I GPA think... is that where they meant oh sorry um no, no, yeah, two answers meant, for the like... price of one um yeah. but that was that was at the the ABOS conference where for the first time since I'd been going they had book bike vendors there they usually have bookmobiles you can check out but they had the book bike vendors and so they let us ride it around and test ride them yeah that's great I didn't even realize that so that is a great answer so okay let me make sure oh yeah which people counter app do you use um so when people come up to the bike are you <sighs> tracking statistics like how are you doing that I'm so sorry that I don't have my phone with me. Um, I think it's literally called People Counter, if I'm not mistaken. But I can, okay. when I get back to my to my desk, I can I can share that with you, Stephanie. Um, but it, it's just a free app, and it literally is so. I wish I could show you. It's so simple. It just has a big plus button and a little minus button, and a space for the numbers to go. And I just tap it. Um, but otherwise, we use just paper. Um, like a printed, which I can share this to. Um, I just have boxes and we tally in the different categories and then come back to the library and, and digitize it and recycle the paper. Okay, awesome. And that kind of ties into the next question is, do you have a schedule of who does the shifts for the book bike? Um, did you say it was like two people on staff to do it right now? So first, it's two. We, we rely on Google Calendar. My personal okay. motto is if it's not on my calendar it's not happening so I have an 
uh, with the outreach, I believe we have like outreach at hobokenlibrary.org. And so with that account, I have a Google calendar um, for outreach visits, and then I create the instances and invite people to it. Um, and so if ever James is going to be on vacation and I have to cover one of his, then he declines it. And then I know that I have to do that visit. So it's not, um, it's not integrated into our staff schedule, um, but that's the way that we keep track of who's doing which visit. Okay, great. And I think one last question. Um, do you take the book bike out in colder months as well? I was also curious about this. No, so our season is May is April through October. We kick off with National Library Week. Um, that changes every year, but that'll be the week that we bring out the book bike. We have a book bike welcome back party. We try to align it with National outreach day, like library outreach day, which used to be National Bookmobile Day. Um, we'll have a party in the park and we'll reintroduce the book bike to everyone, do a story time, have crafts, buttons, things like that. And then we'll start our weekly visits in April or May, depending on when National Library Week falls. Um, and then we'll go through Halloween. So we'll go through the last week of October. Um, I would say the weather is the worst in the spring and late summer, like August when the thunders like the flash thunderstorms you have sometimes and in the spring where it's just although this year it's feel like it's been raining every week last year there was I think eight weeks in a row that it rained um on the weekend um so it stinks because there's no really no good time that you're gonna have perfect weather um but that's our, that's traditionally our season would be April through October National Library Week through Halloween so we're basically the same but the picture I put in the chat um was during the pandemic and it was there was an outdoor market so we did bring it to that I guess it was probably 2021 um so I brought it to that it was about 20 degrees that day so I did not stay very long so um <clears throat> so I mean we will occasionally do something like that um there was another outdoor market um this fall uh late November, early December, but it was a beautiful day. It was probably about 65 degrees out. So it was fine. We did it. But um, so we, we're not like, we don't have a strict schedule to it, but you know, if it's not going to be a good day, we wouldn't, we wouldn't do it. And we don't really think about it in the winter months too much. Yeah. We, we also need a break because <laughs> it's a lot. <laughs> so um, and it's you not guys even a break. Do a lot. So you do. We do a lot of do, we so. do a lot of outreach. Yeah. So things don't really. I mean, even November through March, things don't really stop per se. Um, but to to take the book bike off our plate for that amount of time is is pretty nice. Um, but um, someone said ice cream is important too, and so I just want I would be remiss if I didn't share that because we got mistaken for ice cream so much. I started bringing ice pops with me in the summer months. So you know those flavor ice that you freeze and then you cut the top. So I had a little uh crossbody freezer bag, and I would like walk around and cut the tops and give them to everyone. So that was really fun. Um, there's really no end to like the things you can do to to enhance the value of these visits. Um. But I would say uh, people love the book bike. Um, they really do. Like the community, they just like that it exists. So while there's so much you can do to enhance the visits, honestly, just showing up and being there and it is is enough because it, people are really tickled by it. Um, and uh, and yeah, there was one time I was walking to the train and a little kid like and his mom walked out of a building and the kid goes, the book bike lady. Like it was so cute. Um, and it's funny because the kids recognize me, but there's so many of them that I hardly recognize them. But I love being the book bike lady. It's it's really fun. Um, much more manageable than a bookmobile, uh, in, in my opinion. Like the best thing, like Irene and I were saying, that you can really curate and like make your visits so hyper specific to that community is really a gift. Great. Thanks, Allie. That was such great information, too. And I wanted to make sure if anyone has any more questions, we're happy to stick around and answer. Um, feel free to unmute yourself or put anything in a chat. But this was so, so great. Yeah, I appreciate your insight too, Irene and Mary Catherine as well. It was so informative. Thank you. You're welcome. Yes, thank you. I just want to make sure, yeah, no one else, no one else had any more questions. Um, we can try to miss anything. 
So I think we'd answered everything. Uh, well, yeah, well, thank you all for staying with us for a little over time. And Ali, thank you for this information. It was so great. So My yes, pleasure. I agree, Karen. So informative, so fun. Even the ice cream and hot dog talk was really great. <laughs> <laughs> and if you ever want to reach out, talk book bike, I'm so happy to do that. Yeah. I've, I've been so lucky to be able to connect with so many librarians over this. Um, even there was even someone who worked for Central Park Conservancy reached out to me because they wanted to get a, a book bike. They wanted to get a bike, awesome. like a trike that they can bring around Central Park to do education and programming. And so I connected them with some vendors and um, it was awesome. So it's always really fun to talk about it. And if you do book bike stuff, just send me photos because I also love to see what other people do. Great. Awesome. Yes. Thank you again. And thank you all for being here. I'll be in touch with everyone soon. Thanks again, Allie. Thanks for having me. And thanks, Irene and Mary.